What's up, Control Freaks, and welcome to the Control Freak Podcast. I am your host, Les Alex. In today's episode, I am riding solo. I will be breaking down Azorius Control in standard. What? And I will be checking out the bands from standard that recently happened. And is standard actually playable? And if so, is it actually a tier one top strategy in the format? That's what I'm going to be delving into today on this episode of the Control Freak Podcast. But before we jump into it, real quick, let me get the housekeeping out of the way. I do want to say that I want to give a huge shout out and thank you to both of my two newest Patreon members. Ricky Ty and Robert Brummett. If you would like to support the podcast and enjoy the content that I make, you can support it for less than a dollar an episode by heading on over to patreon.com slash less Alex. Every Patreon member will receive an awesome control freak sticker along with other perks based on whichever level you support at. And I just posted an update to my Azorius Control Sideboard Guide in Pioneer, and I will be posting a sideboard guide for standard Azorius Control as well. So if that's something that you look forward to and that you're excited about, head on over to patreon.com slash lessalex. Consider throwing me a couple bucks a month. It really does help support the content. That is the best and most direct way to help support the content. You can also head on over to twitch.com TV slash less Alex and subscribe over there. Who knows? You might have a couple of Bezos bucks that you don't know about. Remember, if you are a Amazon Prime member, you get one free subscription every month. And I would very much appreciate it if you gave it to me. Uh, and as a reminder, you can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, Stitcher, basically wherever you listen to podcasts. I live stream these every week on Facebook, which is my Facebook page, Les Alex, the control freak on twitch.tv slash Les Alex. And of course on YouTube, you can watch live. So if you're watching after the fact on the podcast version and you want to watch, head on over there, watch it live and make sure to head on over to Apple podcasts and Spotify. Give a five-star review, please. This is actually probably the most important thing. It helps the podcast grow. The algorithm checks for podcasts that have a lot of reviews. And I do have about 31 to 32 reviews, but much more would be appreciated. It takes literally about 30 seconds on Apple Podcasts, probably 10 seconds on Spotify. So if you're on either of those platforms and you want to help out in a huge way that is the best way to do it head on over there five stars couple kind words about the podcast about my content and you can really really help out and make sure to check out my articles on quietspeculation.com i have a hybrid video article pieces over there every week this past week i played lotus control so if you're interested in that in pioneer check that out and Tomorrow, if you're listening to this, but Tuesday, if you're watching, I have a piece coming out where I play Zoomer Drakes, and that deck is a whole lot of fun, right up my alley, a nice Is It Tempo deck, very, very cool. And if you want to chop it up with me elsewhere, you can follow me on Twitter, at Les Alex over there, and join the free Discord. You can join the free Discord. It's open. It's free. There is a uh, perk for patron members, but it is an open and free Discord There we go. That is the housekeeping. Thanks, everybody, for joining me. And we are going to jump into some really cool talk about standard Azorius control. Again, I am solo today, so I'm super excited. Uh, What's up, Cryptic Rocket? This might be a little bit more of a casual show because I'm going to be looking at and responding to uh, comments that are coming through in the live feed, which I usually don't do. But being that I'm alone today... I think it makes sense here explaining why I'm wrong about a standard blue white. I think it's really good. Let's not jump the gun though. Let us talk about the standard bands that happened on May 29th. 
there was a huge banning that shook up Standard, uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Reckoner Bankbuster, and Invoke Despair. All three of these cards were banned in Standard. And, of course, they announced a new banning system where they will be making a Standard banned announcement one time a year. And then three weeks after every set release, every Standard set release, they will have an updated ban and restricted announcement. Although they said that this would likely just be for older formats unless something catastrophic happens, something like Oko, something like uh, Cat Combo, things like that. They won't really be touching standard unless that, uh, you know, unless something catastrophic happens. So let's take a look at the very first week after the, the bans happened. There was obviously a standard challenge as there is every weekend. But let's take a look at the deck list that got first place. And I was awestruck. I was blown away by the fact that Azorius Control won week one of a new format. Now, I realize it's not a new format in the sense that, oh, there was a rotation. But the fact that these three cards got banned in standard really did shake up the metagame. And typically, historically, Azorius Control, or any control deck for that matter, is a horrendous choice for week one because you just don't know what you're fighting. You don't know what you're going to have to play against. You really don't know what your sideboard cards are. So the fact that Ruin000 took first place at the very first standard challenge really speaks volumes to potentially how powerful this deck is. Let's go through it. I'm gonna I know you probably hate when I read off card by card, but since this is a brand new format, again, I've just recently started playing standard again since I saw that, well, Azorius control might be viable. So I wanted to jump in. I wanted to try out a list on my own, and I, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. So let's go through it. We've got three, and this is week one. So this is from the 6-3. This is the very first standard challenge after the banned and restricted announcement saying Invoke Despair, Bank Buster, and Kiki Jiki were all banned in standard. We've got three Ambitious Farmhands, two Syncopates, one Spell Pierce, love the main deck Spell Pierce, two Memory Deluge, three first Thirst for Discovery, two Wash Away, and if you're not familiar with this, well, <laughs> let me read it to you. It's a Blue instant, it's got cleave for blue, uh, blue, blue one and counter target spell that, and then in brackets, that wasn't cast from its owner's hand. And you can play the cleave cost for uh, to get rid of the brackets, basically. So, basically, a negate, right? Basically, a negate, um, or a counter spell, rather. Three mana counter spell, not great, not good. Fine, right? Very fine. Uh, Make Disappear is a two of Soul Patrician, which is a card I'm very skeptical of, but it seems to be very popular. Um, if you don't know, uh, Soul Patrician, one and a colorless, or I'm sorry, one and a white instant exile target non land permanent for as long as that card remains exiled. Its owner may play it. A spell that casts this way, opponents cost it costs two more. So basically, it makes it cost two more. Um, then we have 27 lands, including a Ganjo. We've got a mix of Rafine's Tower and Spara's Headquarter. Uh, we've got Ottawara, a Ganjo. Interestingly enough, um, we don't have any creature lands. There is a really good one in standard, the one that makes mites. Um, and we'll see <laughs> coming up. That card's really good. That card's really good. I'm a fan of that card in this deck. Uh, moving on, though, we've got three Wandering Emperors. Two to Fairy Temporal Pilgrim, and this is a card that, in a world with Invoke Despair, as most black decks top end, there's no way, there's no way you could get away with casting this card. Five mana to draw a card, not happening. There's no way if if you're just walking that straight into an Invoke Despair, uh, uh, you want to do it. But now that Invoke Despair is gone, this is pretty reasonable. It's nice to see that Teferi's getting some love again in Standard. Uh, yeah, that's right. Five mana Teferi's pretty good historically in Standard. And finally, the King has returned, baby. <laughs> uh, and then moving on, the Eternal Wanderer. This card is in 
insane. I've said it once. I'll say it again. I've said it in Pioneer, especially. But this card is very similar to Elspeth Sun's champion. Um, it's uptick can kill just straight up kill tokens. It just blinks them out of existence. Um, it's zero makes a two, two double striker. And then it's minus four. Basically you get to, if they have three or four creatures, let's say they have a one, one and a shieldred and whoever cares, who cares what else they have, right? You can target the one, one token. Everything else is gone. Everything else is gone. I can't remember the name of the card, but there was a card like this in past standard um, that had, oh, Cataclysmic Gear Hulk was a card like this. But um, yeah, Eternal Wanderer, excellent, excellent. No more than one creature can attack the Eternal Wanderer. Each combat, which is huge, uh, that is a passive ability. Uh, six mana for all of that. Really, really strong Planeswalker. I'm super excited that this is seeing play. Uh, and then we have Farewell, Silver Scrutiny, which is a blue, blue X. Sorcery, you may cast Silver Scrutiny as though it had flash. If X is three or less, draw X cards. Very, very strong. Um, however, in my opinion, Memory Deluge is just the better card overall. Obviously getting to flashback Memory Deluge. Um, but that's the thing, right? This is a This is a week one deck list. So this wasn't a perfect deck list by any means. Heck, this person probably gauged the metagame very, very well. But by no means, in my opinion, was this a perfect 75. Um, Silver Scrutiny, a fine card, right? But overall, I would have opted to play Memory Deluge. Uh, we have four laydown arms, obviously with 27 lands, 10 of which are actual factual planes. <laughs> Um, and then you got Ambitious Farmhand to go get the planes. Very good. This is a blocker. It can chip away at your opponent's life total. Um, and then additionally, we've got Rafine's Tower and Sparta's Headquarters, both planes. So Lay Down Arms, excellent, excellent removal. And then we have two Sunfall. Okay, moving on to the sideboard, we got two Negate, one Disdainful Stroke, two Holebreaker Horrors, one, another Farewell, two Depopulate, Two unlicensed herds, uh, two Boombringer Valkyries, and three Chrome Host Seed Sharks. One thing I do want to point out about this deck list off the rip, guys, is this deck has a ton of cards that not only are legal in Pioneer, but are absolute powerhouses in Pioneer. Okay? Because we have, let's count them. Let's count them, right? We've got Memory Deluge. We've got Make Disappear. Excellent counterspell. Arguably the best counterspell for Azorius Control. I know people hate Absorb. Um, we've got Wandering Emperor. Absolutely changed the face of Azorius Control and Pioneer. Uh, you don't leave home without at least three of these in your Pioneer Control deck. Uh, Eternal Wanderer. There's an argument that this card could see play over Elspeth Sun's Champion. Um, Farewell. Always, always a one of at least. Lay down arms. That card is seen play in Pioneer. There's been me included, people in the past saying that lay down arms version is a better version. Now we have a lot more aggressive deck lists in Pioneer, so I've moved away from lay down arms. I've I've laid down arms, <laughs> um, and then Sunfall is popping up more and more in Pioneer than ever, and it's very good. Exiling is super relevant in a world that has. Uh, Gobo Khan and things like that. Obviously, Negate, Disdainful Stroke, Hole Break, Hole Breaker Horror, Farewell, uh, Unlicensed Hearse, Boonbringer Valkyrie, and Chrome Host Seed Chart. Basically, this entire sideboard is Pioneer playable. Why do I bring this up? Well, it, it, it adds to the overall power level of this deck. This is a week one deck, folks. This is a week one deck. That means, again, they didn't really know what they were fighting. Um, so basically, you can return old, yeah, quarterly system. Syncopate is legal. Yeah, Syncopate is a legal card um, from, I think, Crimson Vow. Yeah, and there it is on screen. If you are watching on YouTube and everything, uh, make sure to like the video, of course. But 
and subscribe if you're enjoying the content. <laughs> but yeah, single paint, very, very legal in this format. I will say from Sunfall has impressed. Yes, yeah, Sunfall is a very good magic card, I think. Um, being able to wrath their board and then in step flip your incubation token. Oh my gosh, it's so good. It's so good. So what else was in this top eight? Well, kind of what you would expect, right? We've got uh, Esper Legends in second place, Esper Legends in third. We've got, uh, what is this? Mono White, right? Big Mono White. Very, very powerful. We've got another Esper Legends in se uh, fifth. We've got Mono Red in sixth. Another Esper Legends in seventh. And then to round out top eight, another Esper Legends. It seems to me, it appears to me, that in this very first tournament, not many people were trying anything different. And I think that, that you could make an argument. That's why Ruin000 had a such good results because they probably knew people were going to flock to Esper Legends. They knew people were going to flock to the mono white, the big mono white deck, right? So very impressive here. Very impressive. But that's week one, right? That was that was almost a month ago now at this point. We're towards the end of the month here. It is the 25th of the month at this point. So what does this deck look like now? And am I going to give you my list? That's the question, right? <laughs> but what does this deck look like now? Let's take a look at a more recent, a more recent standard challenge. Let me pull it up here. All right. All right, let's swap it over to this and bring that right back up for you watching. Here it is on screen if you're watching. All right, so very similar, right? We've got four ambitious farmhands, three memory deluge, two thirst for discoveries. So that's different. Four make disappear. Cards very strong, especially in standard. Four soul patrician. So up, we went up on the number. This was by, by the way, this was MTGO user Slacks, S L A X X. So shout out to them. Um, Rafine's Tower, Spara's Headquarters, still no. Um, of the land that makes my i'm blanking on the name of that card but i do apologize uh wandering ember as a three uh wandering emperor as a three of teferi temporal pilgrim as a three of two eternal wanderers so they played with the numbers in this one lay down arms as a four of again and three sunfalls um taking a look at the board they've included three destroy evils a great card against the big domain deck um, it hits enchantments, which is super, super important. And again, I'm blanking on the name, but Leyline Binding, that's it. Leyline Binding. And Murex is the name of the land I was looking for. I'm sorry. I'm terrible with, I'm terrible with names. I'm terrible with names of cards. Unless it's right in front of me or I've played it with them for years. I'm bad with names. Um, and then as I was saying in the sideboard, we've got, uh, one hole breaker horror for sunset revelry because mono red is very much alive and kicking in this format. We've got two temporary lockdowns, which I love. However, you do got to be a little bit careful. You do got to be a little bit careful with this card. Um, not in this deck list, but in maybe my deck list. Um, Chrome Host Seed Shark. Insane card. This card is nuts. I am all in on this card. I was very skeptical of this card at first, but even in Pioneer, I want to play this card now. Uh, it's just, it generates so much value. You get so many tokens off this bad boy. I, I love Chrome House Seed Shark at this point. I love it. I don't know why. Probably because it's awesome. <laughs> Negate. Let's take a look at the rest of the top eight. We have, well, look at that. This is Azorius. Um, what is this? Azorius Soldiers? Yep. Azorius Soldiers. We've got Green White Enchantments featuring Katilda, Jukai Naturalist, Weaver of Harmony, things of this nature. And then we've got a Demir deck list that looks like Demir Control. Oh, Esper Control. Okay. Well, that makes sense because you do have. Hmm. 
Hmm. Okay. Well, yeah, they, they, I'm sorry. Rafine's tower. Yeah, there it is. I was looking for it. I was like, where's Rafine's tower? There it is. Um, then we have Esper legends. That's fifth place. We've got red, black mid range still kicking around. And then this is a deck list that I have played. Uh, I think three times at this point with this list. Um, the deck that I've played against the most is this list right here. And this is just a crazy domain deck that uses Atali's and attracts Grand Unifiers, Archangel Wrath, and Topiary Stomper, along with Ossification, Leyline Binding, Make Disappear. All of these cards, right? This card, this deck, I can say, will grind you into the dirt if you don't play right. And things like Atraxa and Atali are absolutely backbreaking at times, but with Azori's control, you can grind with these decks. With this deck, this deck is very strong. This deck right here, this, uh, I don't know, five-color domain deck, I guess you could call it. Um, but you can grind with it. I think that this is, it's got to be a bad matchup, right? Because they just do so much big stuff. Um, I've beaten it every time, but I do think it is one of the harder uh, matchups they do bring in Tyrannix Rex, big old toxic boy. <laughs> the 8 8 can't be countered. Sheesh. Um, very, very strong. And then to round things out, we've got a big, big mono white to round out the top eight. But yeah, this is kind of what we're looking at. I do want to talk about the metagame for a little bit. All right, let's kick it here and then go back to the metagame. Okay, so metagame breakdown according to mtggoldfish.com. We have Esper Legends at 10.6% of the meta. Mono Red Aggro at 8.6% of the meta. Rakdos Midrange still kicking around at 7.1, even though they lost three cards. <laughs> um, Selesny Enchantments at 6.1. Four Color Ramp, which is the domain deck that I was... Uh, talking about earlier, Orzov Control. This deck, pretty interesting, actually. Um, it gets to play just all the best white and black cards, and white and black are really good in this format. You can play Wandering Emperor, Eternal Wanderer, Invasion of Gabokan, um, Breach the Multiverse, Sumless Play, of course, um, Shieldred, the Apocalypse. But yeah, that deck's very good. And then at 5.6% of the meta, tied with Orzov Control, is Azorius Control. And then 46 is Azorius uh, Soldiers. Esper Midrange at 4. Demir Midrange at 4. Esper Control at 3.5. Mono White Aggro at 3.5. And rounding off what I'm going to talk about here is Mono Black Midrange. There is a Just Guy Control list, um, but it's only 3% of the meta. So looking at this, right? Looking at this, what good matchups do we have? Let me pop it up here for you. We will bring it on screen for those watching. Maybe. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay. Should be on screen if you're watching. There it is. All right, Esper Legends. Like I said, I, uh, I think that this is probably 50-50, maybe slightly favored for us. They, they do have a lot of things going on here that it, it is really good. I mean, they basically get to play the, the best cards in the format. Uh, um, but if you build your deck right and play tight, you, you can beat it, um, make disappear, go for the throat. They're kind of doing some of the same things we want to do. They you know have counter spells. They have a ton more pressure than us, but they don't have access to the Wraths. Not that they need it against us, but our Wraths are extremely good against them. They have to kill us with creatures. Now, um, one thing they have Takanuma, Ottawara, and they bring in the duresses. They bring in the disdainful strokes. Urta is really good against us as well. So this deck, I I feel like it's very close, but I do feel we are slightly favored in this matchup. Uh, moving on, Mono Red Aggro. Oh, a tale of his time, right? Mono Red Aggro is. Really good. Monastery Swift Spear, uh, Phoenix Chick, Bloodthirsty Adversaries, Felden, uh, Furnace Punisher, Invasion of Tarkir. Uh, it's a mono red deck, though, right? 
as long as we play tight uh, and kind of skew our we, we got to kind of sideboard against them pre-board if we're expecting a mono red heavy uh, matchup. And the way you can do that is by playing main deck temporary lockdowns if you want, because all of their creatures other than Furnace Punisher get tagged by temporary lockdowns. So if you're expecting mono red, I would highly lean into temporary lockdowns. Play maybe some more spot removal as well. You can play ossification main. But then keep in mind, if you are playing temporary lockdowns, it will it will tag your own. It will tag your own. I may or may not have done that on, on stream. <laughs> um, but that's mono red. Again, very close. Very close. Rakdos mid-range. This is this is also, I mean, they're all close matchups. They're all close matchups. I think we're slightly favored. Um, we were a dog. I mean, this deck obviously is always controlling its current configuration. It just did not exist before the banning. But now I think we're fav favored. Uh, obviously, Sheraldred is huge against us. We have to find a out a way to kill that immediately. But um, yeah, I, I like our game one matchup. And then game two. I like they obviously bring in duresses, but overall, I think I think we're favored. I think we're favored. Uh, Slesny and Shamans, this can be a bit of a sticky matchup <laughs> for sure. Um, especially if they resolve Calyx, it can get out of hand very quickly. Um, moving on though, four color ramp again. This one <sighs> can be rough. They can outgrind you. They can outgrind you. We just looked at the deck list, but I'm going to pop it back up here on camera for you, on screen for you. Um, Itali's nuts. It tracks is really good. You've got these are these are must counter things. Luckily, Topiary Stomper and Angel of Wrath, not really great against us, but these two, Atraxa and Natali, insane against us. So don't let those resolve. If you do, it's a bad time. Orzov Control. Um, this is just a big old modern. Um, uh, this is a big old mid range deck. I think we are quite favored against Orzov. Azorius Soldiers. Um, this is just an aggro deck, right? And we can we, we got some game against them. I'm not sure who's favored there. I actually haven't played that matchup yet, so I don't really know. Esper mid-range. This is not Esper Legends. This is not to be confused with Esper Legends. Although it certainly looks like it, doesn't it? I wonder why it's not called Esper Legends. It's weird. Has a bunch of legends. <laughs> I assume that matchup would be very similar, very close, but slightly favored to Esper Legends. Um, Mirror Ridge Range again, Children. You know what to probably expect from this graveyard: Trespassers, Misery Shadow, things of that nature. A lot of cards, right? From Pioneer, a ton of cards. Misery Shadow, um, Graveyard Trespasser, Children. Standards powerful. Standards fun. Standards fun again. This is awesome. Whether you whether you like standard or not, standard is fun again because the power level is just cranked up to eleven right now. Um, Esper control obviously can be a wash. Um, them having access to duresses, siphon insight is huge in this matchup. Um, and then holebreaker horror obviously these are the cards we care about, uh, but still a toss up. Mono white aggro, only three point five percent of the metagame. Uh, can obviously be sticky because Thalia is always a pain. And if they curve out, they can kill you very fast. So um, temporary lockdowns, super necessary. Super necessary against them. Um, but yeah, that, that is kind of the what, I, my, what my take is on how the metagame breakdown is and whether we're favored or not favored or whatever. Um, but overall, hey, Azorius Control is back. And that's awesome for standard. I've been playing more of it on Arena. I'm super excited. I have all the cards. What is my deck list, you may be asking? Well, let's head on over to Moxfield. I will tell you what my deck list configuration currently looks like. All right. We will present. 
right, here it is. And it is on screen if you're watching, but this is my deck list. Again, <clears throat> only played about 10 or so matches with this deck, but we are rolling. I don't know my exact matchup, win to loss ratio, but it is very, very good. I know that much. Um, so we've got two Teferis, two Eternal Wanderers, four Wandering Emperors, one Farewell, four Lay Down Arms, two Sunfalls, two Thirst, three uh, Memory Deluge, four Make Disappear. Again, that card's nuts. We've got Ossification. I really like Ossification. Planeswalkers, historically, as you probably know if you're watching this, have always been a thorn in the side of Azorius Control. We often just don't have the tools in most formats to deal with with Planeswalkers, Ossification does that. Uh, I'm playing as a four of. We're playing Ambitious Farmhand. You rarely flip Ambitious Farmhand, as a side note. You rarely flip it. Um, it is possible, right? But it is it doesn't happen much. You could make a Teferi token. You can make uh, either one of the Wandering Emperor tokens an Ambitious Farmhand. You could flip it, but it doesn't happen much. Um, and then we are playing... I'm playing a Mirix. This card's nuts. It's just... Basically a creature land, right? Uh, you spit out creatures. It does cost three, which is quite a bit. But late game, late game against especially the domain deck, you, you get to add pressure and nickel and diming them. Hey, and if you win by poison, hey, win by poison, still a win, baby. Um, I am playing 10 planes. Rafine's Tower is a four of. Uh, you can play Spar's Headquarter too. I think uh, it's, you know, probably correct to play a split two and two or three and two or four and two or whatever the case. Uh, it really comes down to, do you want your spells to be on curve or are you cool with occasionally being a turn behind? That's a decision up to you. Obviously I've chosen to try and always have untapped lands. That's my thing. Um, and then in the sideboard, we have Chrome host seed shark. This card again, it's nuts. It's nuts. This card will win you so many games against not only Asper Legends, but also against the Domain deck. Um, you can make, I mean, sheesh, uh, five, six, seven tokens a game. If this thing goes unchecked, you just are crushing it. Destroy Evil, again, being able to hit Leyline Bindings. Card is great. It kills Shieldreds. It kills a huge number of Cards, Atraxa, Itali, cards great. Disdainful Stroke, counters all of those cards I just named. Great in the mirror as well. Holebreaker Whore, Whore, obviously excellent in the mirror. You can bring it in against Esper Legends as an uncounterable win con. Cards great. Negate, again, for the mirror. I like Spell Pierce. No one ever expects it. Is this probably correct? Eh, maybe not. Maybe not. But... Spell Pierce is awesome, and no one ever expects it out of the sideboard. If they don't see Spell Pierce game one, they're not going to expect it. Sunset Revelry, again, mono red is a thing. You got to protect against it. Sunset Revelry, very, very strong. And then finally, we got two temporary lockdowns. Um, again, buyer beware. Buyer beware here. Um, player beware. Ossification. And temporary lockdown do not play well with each other. So if you ossification things early game, be cognizant of that. Same thing with your farewells. Don't name uh, enchantments with farewell if you have ossifications on the board and you actually care about what's under it. Now, if you hit a token or whatever, you know, obviously that doesn't matter. But if you are uh, getting a shieldred or athalia or something relevant right farewell naming enchantments it'll come back and it could come back to bite you especially if it's a planeswalker because if that happens late game that could be bing bang boom hamburger time for you um temporal lockdown very good though very good against the aggro decks very good um so that's my list i will be again coming up with a sideboard guide on my patreon so if that's something you're interested in i had someone on twitter ask me about it um, asked me specifically, do I have a sideboard guide on Patreon? And I was like, not yet. Stay tuned though. So wanting, uh, you find yourself wanting more than one, what more than one, what 
Sorry, I didn't see that comment until now. Spell Pierce? Is that what you're talking about? Or Hullbreaker Horror? I guess there's a couple cards we could be talking about. The Might? Yeah, I could totally see that too. I could see an argument for that as well. Um, Mirix, very good. I don't know how much you really want to because you are pretty devoted to white in this deck. <laughs> pretty devoted to white. Um, you got Wandering Emperor, Eternal uh, Wanderer, Farewell, Sunfall. And then you're also got uh, Memory Deluge and Teferi as double blue pips. Um, and then, of course, Hullbreaker and Temporal Lockdown and Sideboard. But yeah, that's my list. Again, stay on the lookout for the Sideboard Guide. I'll be posting that later this week. Um, but as for my final thoughts on the deck, on the format, overall, I like it. I love it. I am happy that Azorius Control is finally a player in Standard again. Because when Azorius Control is good in Standard and Tier 1 in Standard, it usually dominates Standard, historically speaking. Um, is that going to be the case with this? I don't know. I will say if you have a control brain like me, if you're a control freak like me, it might be the perfect the perfect time to dip back into standard. I am so excited for this deck, guys. I really am. I've been playing uh, quite a bit of standard. I've been playing Pioneer. Um, again, I'm really excited, though. I really feel like the deck could use more utility lands. Absolutely agree. I do agree with that. I think you could probably shave some islands. But keep in mind, if you're playing ossification, you need basics. You do need basics or else you cannot ossification. I've ran into that a time or two, just playing through the ladder. But I hope uh, you guys did get value out of this episode. I know this is a little bit of a shorter episode. I'm flying solo. Um, let me know. Go review the podcast if you liked it and you're watching on YouTube. Make sure to like it. Really, I it means the world. It takes literally one second to like on YouTube. Um, and if you're watching now live on Twitch, head on over to YouTube. Hit that subscribe button and Hit the like button on this video. It would definitely help out. I appreciate everybody. Again, if you want to support the content in a direct way, if you want to get access to my sideboard guide in Pioneer and the upcoming sideboard guide for standard Azorius control, you can head on over to Patreon. Even the lowest tier of patrons get access to my sideboard guides. For less than a dollar an episode, you get access to my sideboard guides and get some cool control freak stickers um it really does help out and it means the world to me thank you to all of my amazing patrons and again special shout out for ricky ty and robert brummett this week's newest patreon members over there and head on over to apple Podcasts and or spotify to give a five-star review it literally takes less than three minutes on uh on apple Podcasts and literally less than like 10 seconds on spotify five stars I appreciate you. Uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Podbean, and Stitcher. That's where you can listen to the podcast. You can watch it live on Facebook. You can uh, also listen to it and watch it live on YouTube and Twitch every single week. So go follow and subscribe on all those platforms. Um, if you want to chop it up with me elsewhere, I am on Twitter, Atlas Alex there. And join the, join the Discord. It'll be down in the description as you're watching this or listening to it. Go join the, it's an open free discord. We got, we, we, we do fun things. We talk, we chat. Um, and of course, go check out my quiet speculation articles. Quietspeculation.com is an awesome, not only me, there's a ton of other content creators over there. And this week I am delving into Zoomer Drakes. Is it Zoomer Drakes? It was fun. I had a lot of fun playing that deck. Um, but yeah, everybody, thank you all so much for watching and listening. Again, <clears throat> I appreciate you all. Keep spreading that Azorius propaganda. And until next time, I'll catch you all on the flippy flop. Adios.